Kirsty TV. My guest today, Sue Wong, is an inspiration. She is an international fashion designer whose designs are in over 27 countries around the planet. Her story is a true rags to riches story. Thank you so much for being here today, Sue. Thank you so much, Kirsty, for having me. I'm deeply honored to be here. Well, it's a pleasure. So last night I was out looking for some outfits. I mean, what do I wear interviewing a fashion designer? And I happened to actually go into Bloomingdale's and see your Sue Wong corner. Yes, we were very well represented in you know, all of the major department stores such as Bloomingdale, Saks Fifth Avenue and Neiman Marcus. Wow. Does it still blow your mind when you're out shopping and there's this corner that has all of your designs in it? I think it's very rewarding as a designer to just really see my designs on real women across the planet everywhere. Wow, it must just, yeah. I mean, when you work so hard and when you start out as a young designer, at 18, did you think that you were going to be having your designs in 27 countries around the world? Uh, no, I didn't, but I was always ambitious and I really have always had a really strong vision of, of my future and where I really want to be in life. At what age did you know that you had this artistic, creative side? Um, ever since I can remember, I was really always making my own toys or, you know, uh, making clothes for myself. I, I think I, I sewed my first blouse when I was nine years old. Wow. So you started making your own clothes at nine? Yes, I did. Wow. And I, I would design, uh, in high school, I would design a brand new dress for every Friday night uh, for the school dance, and I had to have a new um, I had to have a new outfit every Friday, so <laughs> it was really good. Um, it was all great creative practice. Now, you live quite the life. I mean, you have a house in Hawaii, you have two houses in Hollywood, um, you know, but you started from humble beginnings. And yes, I do really come from very humble beginnings because I was born in communist China and my mother and I escaped uh, the communist regime by my mother trading in her wedding jewelry to the border guard and he released us to our freedom when I was five years old, and then we lived in Hong Kong for one year before finally joining my father, who quickly escaped and made his way back to America. And so I met my father when I was six and a half years old. So coming to America, the land of opportunity and uh, land of the free. Yes. What did you think at that young age of this new country that you were in? The Chinese name for America is Golden Mountain. Really? So I was really uh, promptly put into an, a ghetto in downtown LA. <laughs> we lived in a tenement house called the Paradise Apartments, which was cockroach infested and rat Gosh. infested. So I wasn't very impressed at first. And uh, my first uh, neighborhood, my parents finally uh, bought their um, own house in South Central LA. And I grew up in an ethnically diverse neighborhood. Yeah. And then we moved to um, Culver City, you know, where I really kind of came of age. And then I lived in Venice as a beach bohemian for years. And my first boutique store was right on uh, the oceanfront walk in, in Venice. And I had um, really very illustrious, uh, famous clients such as Goldie Hawn and, um, you know, Mrs. Um, Mick Jagger at the time, Bian Bianca Jagger. And so I just really dressed a lot of these celebrities. And um, that role or position continues because I still dress a lot of the celebrities today. So what would you say stands out as one of the greatest moments, the highest heights of your career? I think there are many highlights of my long career, but I would say becoming successful after many years of struggle and finding this new venue, um, which I sort of stumbled upon about 12 years ago, um, designing couture wear, but at popular prices and excelling that's at it. That's affordable, yeah. That's affordable because my gowns look like they're, they should be $5,000. Yeah. But in fact, they're only a few hundred dollars. Yeah. And it makes it really accessible to the every woman out there. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, I like to bill myself as the every woman's couturier. Because, Wonderful. Because when, um, when the average woman looks at a Vogue magazine or a Harper's Bazaar and they see all these name brand designers from Europe such as Chanel, Versace, and they're selling for $25,000, $30,000 a gown, they're going to say, well, that's for J.Lo or Nicole Kidman, but it's in a and accessible Not for me, me, yeah. Yes, so I offer the same drop dead glamorous red carpet looks for anywhere between 
400 to 800 dollars at retail which is just very very affordable so what do you say to young designers or any artist or business person entrepreneur out there that's at the beginning of their journey what one piece of advice do you think they need to know i think you know you have to have commitment you have to really you know be able to sacrifice yourself to your art if you are an artist so is there anything you would do differently knowing what you know now is there anything you'd change no, not at all. I have no regrets at all, like that Edith Piaf song says, because even the darkness, I experience it as a positive experience because it's really something that, you know, is transformative along our life journeys to really make us more wise and more strong as human beings. Wonderful. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Kirsty. So if you're out there and you're an artist or a creative or an entrepreneur and you want to be on your own journey to success, I think the highest heights are achievable for all of us. You just have to put in the work and be there on the road. So we look forward to seeing you next week on Kirsty TV. Mm -hmm.